and he, we're here at Nordic. Hi. Hi. So, is this a new launch? Uh, this is a new launch. It's uh, been out for a couple of months now. Uh, what we're seeing here is our newest Wi-Fi companion IC. It's the NF7002. You can see here is the NF7002. It is next to our NF5340 multi-protocol system on chip. The NF7002, what it basically is, is a, it's a Wi-Fi 6 companion IC, so it doesn't have its own call. What it's mostly used for is you can put it next to one of our multi-protocol SOCs, so you can add Wi-Fi capabilities to any of your existing products, for example. Because in a lot of use cases, we see a Wi-Fi chip next to a Bluetooth chip, and now we have our own. Nice. Uh, what we are specifically showcasing here, because as you might know, what Nordic is mostly focused on is anything that's low power wireless. And for the most part, Wi-Fi really wasn't low power. And with Wi-Fi 6, we actually have some really nice features that enable low power. And um, what we're seeing at the moment, we have a power profiler kit too, connected to our development kit. And we're measuring the current uh, that we're using for the Wi-Fi communication. At the moment, we are at an average 32 milliamps, and this is what you have if you have normal power saving mode. The problem with that is the sleep periods in between sending data are determined by the router and you can't influence them yourself on the end device. But what Wi-Fi 6 allows you, and this is just one of the power saving features, but in my opinion it's the most important one. It has the feature that's called target wake time. So you can, basically when your device connects to an access point, you can negotiate a wake up schedule. So if I click, uh, I think it's this button, you should see the power drastically dropping. It's not gone. If you, if you look here, it's not gone. It's just very, very little. And our average power consumption, uh, we're just going to wait for, for the next uh, spike when it reconnects. So what target wake time actually does is uh, it negotiates a wake up schedule and then just tells the access point we are just going to be connected once a minute, for example. And here you have to connect several times in a uh, yeah several times in a second, and then you have to uh, just wake up when you actually want to send data. And if so, you know, so this way you save uh, a lot of power. Let's just and tell you what we actually save. So if we look at this section, our average current consumption is down to 18 microamps. Nice. And you would only need to wake up and when you actually was want to send data. Before, and this is like doing the legacy power saving mode, you're at uh, 7 milliamps about. You can get lower if you have different detail values, but uh, usually uh, if, if you're constantly connected, you'll be about uh, 30 milliamps or something. Uh, with uh, detail, like with the legacy power saving mode, you can go down to a couple hundred microamps. And uh, with uh, TWT, you can basically select as long as sleep interval as you want. So you can have your sleep interval be a day if that's what you want. And then you would have your about 17 micrograms all of the time, except when you actually want to send your data. Nice, it could last for years and years on a battery. Well, probably not years and years, but a lot longer than any Wi-Fi device uh, without it boots. In the world, it's yeah. the lowest power Wi-Fi solution ever. Potentially. It depends Potentially. on how you use it. It, 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 it depends on how you use it. So, like, th th this is nothing that we did on our own. So, you will find the different chips that basically do something similar. But uh, you will not find anything that's, uh, yeah, you will not find anything that's uh, a lot better than what you do. So, nice. it's, it's, when somebody tells you it's the lowest in the world, there's a very high chance they're just going to lie, So, which is why I'm not doing it to you. <laughs> okay. So you, you will be able to reach this in, uh, with other devices too. And when, when I look here, I see a module with fans still, and it's putting the chip on the module. Yeah, so the, the, these are different models, right? So this is a fan still model with this chip integrated and an integrated antenna. And in this module, we're basically doing what we just saw in the development kit. So it has the NF7002 next to an NF5340, multi-protocol SOC. So this module has Wi-Fi, it has Zigbee, it has Thread, it has and it has NFC. Well, it doesn't have NFC unless you connect an antenna to it. And but it's the size of a little USB stick. Yes. And it is actually possible to even make them smaller if you want to. Nice. Uh, so the cost of the device and the cost of the power very interesting for the industry, the yeah. embedded world. So that was an exciting launch yes. recently. 
and a lot of people talking about this at the show. Yeah, we, we actually get a lot of interest on this, especially like we, we actually have some of our competitors come over here and check it out. I just, well, I shouldn't say names, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so we, we had a couple of the application engineers actually checking this out because customers had been complaining to them. Uh, so we are probably going to see very similar demos at other suppliers soon. And you had other demos here in the booth also? Yeah. Some of them also using this or is it different demos? Uh, we have some of them using this. Uh, as you have come uh, while everything's closing yeah. down, not everything's working anymore. But uh, we have actually two different applications where we have the same thing. Uh, one of that is asset tracking. So what you can do with a, with a Wi-Fi chip is you can do something that's uh, SSID-based Wi-Fi locationing. So we have chips that... Uh, I'm just going to show it in here. Whoop. So this is our NIF9160. It's a low-power cellular IoT system and package. It does NBIO2, NBIO2, it does LTEM, and you can also get uh, GPS, GNSS. So it's really good for asset tracking, to figuring out where you actually are. Uh, one major downside, or like one of the problems that you actually have with GPS is it has some areas where it struggles. For example, right here where we're standing, we wouldn't get a good GPS signal because there's a roof on top of us. Or if you're in the middle of the city, you're usually not getting any good, uh, you're not, not good at any good uh, GPS signals. So what you can do then is uh, SSID-based Wi-Fi locationing. So what you're basically doing is you look at all the Wi-Fi networks that are close by and uh, collect that data, send it up to the cloud, and the cloud will give you a very accurate estimation of where you actually are. Nice. And this, and this is the part why it's interesting. Uh, at all the places that I just mentioned where GPS tends to struggle, it's exactly the places where you usually have lots of Wi-Fi networks. So this fills a really good gap. It takes less power than GPS, and it's more accurate than single cell or multi-cell based uh, locationing. And it's a standard 3GPPB or no? Uh, well, how so, does it get implemented by everybody everywhere? So you, you basically just need a Wi-Fi chip and something to send data to the cloud. So in this case, we're using our, uh, th this is 5G, so this is LTM and BIOT, uh, normal 5G standard, but the, the low power version of it. And uh, we're just adding Wi-Fi capabilities to it just for the Wi-Fi sniffing. We're actually working on IC that does nothing else than just Wi-Fi sniffing specifically for this use case. And this is where we're actually going to be uh, the first in the world and actually the, the best solution when it comes to SSID-based Wi-Fi locationing. And because this I say because we are actually the only ones who have the complete solution from the hardware, so the NBIOT, the LTEM, so you can have cell-based measurement. Then we have the Wi-Fi IC that just is there specifically for this use case and we have the cloud service. So you have everything in the whole chain just from one supplier. Nice. That's useful to have yep. one supplier sometimes. Then you, you get the full support on everything. Yes. You don't need to search around or mess around or... Yeah, no, th this, this is exactly the case because a lot of the time when you mix chips and services from different suppliers, you'll end up in a situation where something doesn't work. What you're going to have to do is you talk to anyone and they're always going to point the finger at the other person like, okay, this is the Wi-Fi module maker's problem. Or this is because the GPS doesn't work properly. Or this is the cloud service provider. And in this case, if something doesn't work, we are the ones who will be able to help you. And you guarantee it works? Yeah, it works. You can see it. It's working right now. Yeah. And uh, so how long no. are we from a, play, a time when, when all this it works? When, it uh, works right now. Do my Google Drive. Uh, Google Maps indoors and it just a a expands the capability of GPS and yeah. everything. So th this is actually something uh, that your phone is doing right now. So th this is not, a, like, not in itself a new technology. We are just reducing it down so it works on really low power. Right? Most of the things in a phone aren't uh, built to be super low power. Right? Your phone, as you might know, the battery is going to hold two days. If you build a device like this, your battery can actually hold up for a year or longer. Nice. So you're making the, the SSID Wi-Fi indoor positioning much more affordable, cheaper, and... Yes, but like, this is a very specific distinction. It's not indoor positioning. It's actually similar to GPS, right? So it's not high accuracy indoor positioning, which is also a Wi-Fi use case, but that's not what we're doing. The use case, SSID-based Wi-Fi locationing, 
is very similar to what you can achieve with uh, GPS in areas where you have uh, and lots of Wi-Fi networks. So, nice. for example, in the middle of the city. Awesome. Uh, sorry I come so late and uh, lots of stuff is off from the booth, yeah. but there's been lots of different topics that were interesting mm -hmm. at the booth, right? Yeah. Uh, one more that I might be able to mention is... Is Meta uh, still there? Uh, yeah. yeah, Meta is still yeah. here. Sorry. So, uh, one of the demos that we still have here, where we also use the same chip... What's the Meta? Is Meta. So, yeah. Meta is a new smart home standard that uh, you might know about. You probably know it if you have anything to do with smart home. So Meta, very roughly, is an application layer, a shared application layer that runs on top of Wi-Fi and Thread and is using Bluetooth LE for commissioning. The really nice thing about it is uh, you will actually be able to control end devices from the same ecosystem or from different ecosystems. So I can control one device from two different ecosystems if I want to. So and this interoperability with the control system. Yes. And you can just use your Android phone and it just works with yes, a bunch of stuff. Yes, you can use your Android phone, your iPad, uh, your iPhone, your... Uh, uh, Amazon is a bit slow, but you will be able to use Amazon there too. Uh, and uh, Samsung too. And this works with lots of uh, different And is this the chips that are part of the Matter solution? Yes. Uh, so we have two chips here, the NRF52840 and the NRF5340. Those are multi-protocol SOCs again, so they'll be able to do, in this case, the relevant ones are Thread and Bluetooth. And adding to them, if you want to, if you need it, you can add the NF7002 to add Wi-Fi capabilities to it. This is interesting because Thread can use uh, either, uh, because Meta can use either Thread or Wi-Fi as a transport. And in this, in this case, again, we have the complete solution. And everything's already integrated in NF Connect SDK, and we have customers already with certified products on the market, which we're also showing off here. So Matter is new, but it's already potentially soon millions of it's, compatible It's new, devices. but there are already devices on the market that are firmware upgradable to work with Matter now. Wow. All right, just firmware. And then, uh, so that, that was a hot, hot point here. People want to talk with you about how they can get the Matter implemented yep. in all kinds of ways. Yes. All right, cool. So thanks a lot. And there's, oh, here I see some indoor location. You were showing that last time with the array of antennas and stuff yeah, like that. Uh, this demo is actually the same one you've probably seen the last time. Uh, what we're basically doing is, uh, this is an uh, uh, indoor locationing system, or high accuracy indoor locationing system based on Bluetooth, uh, where we have different phase shift based uh, methods to actually figure out uh, where a device is in relation to one another. Nice. Hmm? That's awesome. All right. Cool. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so. uh, this <laughs> this reminds yeah. me. Uh, if this one's interesting, we actually have a YouTube video dedicated to this exact topic. That is called on your channel. On our channel. That is called. Uh, I think it's called High Actuary. No. What is it called? My colleague knows it. Yeah. They will. I will link to it. Yeah. Perfect. I'll find it and link to it. Measuring distance with the 2.4 gigahertz radio only. Cool. All right. Perfect. Cool. That's awesome. I think, I think we've gone through the most of we got our... through everything that's still not packed away. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.